It was an intro. Yeah, interesting. Anyway, hello, yeah, but- welcome. Oh, were you going to sit? Oh, okay. Oh. Nah, go on. All right, well, it's a little weird now because we interrupted each other. Roses of the Duelist variety. Indeed. I uh, Another Yu-Gi-Oh! game. Unlike the last one we did, which was Forbidden Memories, I have no knowledge at all of this specific game. Yeah, so this one, it's... Uh, I think they called it like a spiritual successor to Forbidden Memories, and the models are... I don't know if they're the same ones, but this came out a little bit before Falsebound Kingdom, so a lot of the models look the same. You probably did reuse assets. I wouldn't blame it. It's the same thing Pokemon Stadium did for Pokemon Stadium 1 to 2, and to Coliseum and XD, because they reused the Gen 1 and 2 sp- uh, models. Well, this one, uh, like, this game is interesting in the sense that, oh yeah, it actually, it tells you right here, like, like this is actually based on, like, uh, a series of conflicts that actually happened. Interesting take for Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was a um, it was a series of British civil wars, and it was uh, I think they fought like over control of the British throne at the time. Again, a very interesting take for Yu-Gi-Oh, which is you know very Egyptian. Yeah, it, it's very much a uh, a departure from what is a. Uh, I, I guess I want to say usual for the franchise, but then the the games have kind of really bounced around. Uh, around this time, yeah. I mean, they become they became more streamlined as time went on, more basic. Now this game, it, like it kind of gives me a similar vibe as um, like what Star Fox Adventures did, where like this was gonna be a standalone title that focused on the Wars of the Roses, and they decided to give it a Yu Gi Oh coat of paint to assist with sales. Maybe. Hard to say. They're, maybe they're trying to compete with uh, like Fire Emblem or something at the time. I mean, on the other hand, I could be completely off the mark, and like what we got is what was intended. But I don't know. We'll see as we go. I look. I saw a few screenshots before this, just because I was. Well, I, we had to emergency pick a game. Basically, um, we're working on Dino Crisis, which by the time this goes out, Dino Crisis should be out. But uh, I had switched systems, quote unquote. Um, because of MJ's suggestions, and I didn't think for I didn't think for a second that like, oh yeah, we had this other thing in progress, so I lost all that save data, I had to catch back up. Which I mean, it's a short game, so it's not too bad, but I still have to do it. So, but at this time, we I'm not caught up. So, are do it's not all right. So we're we're summoning we're summoning someone again. Uh, no, you were summoned. Uh, exactly. Well, that uh, kind of what I was trying to say. This is similar to this is similar to some of the other stuff. Yes. Yeah, so it, you are you are the legendary Rose duelist. Oh, okay. This is my usual. Uh huh. Wow, you have the same sound effect. And uh, this is on the PS2, so it's a little weird. I mean, you could tell it looks a little better. I mean, PS1 graphics are still pretty good for 2D images. I believe this was one of the earlier games for PS2. Like, uh, certainly not a launch title, but definitely early on in the PS2's <laughs> life cycle. Probably year one or two. You can kind of tell by looking at the models in the background. It looks very I... PS1. Yeah, as I recall from the, the title screen, this came out in 1996. So when did... uh? Uh, I think, I think PS. When did the PS2 come out? The nineteen I, hmm, because I'm pretty sure the PS2 didn't come out until I don't know. My timeline's always always confusing when I get to PlayStation. Uh, let me see. I'll, uh, I'll have because nin- nin- 1996. Part. I'm pretty sure the PS1 was still in in vogue. Yeah, because I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure the PS2 didn't become popular until like two, or didn't really come on the scene until 2000, 2002, somewhere around there. So the copyright date might be for Yu Gi Oh itself. It might be. Uh, yes, you're right. So uh, February 16, 2003, is when this came out okay. in the U.S. So yeah, Japan got yeah Japan got it about a year and a half before that, September of 2001. Okay, so this was definitely in like a late. Like, they probably were developing this for the PS1 and then moved it over for the PS2, I imagine. That's probably what happened. 
Oh, and then apparently in 2006, it was uh, it was named one of the greatest hits titles. Good for them. I feel like a lot of games got that, though, so... I mean, good for them, but I'm not sure how much that really means. I think that just means it hit a certain amount of sales on the PlayStation. Probably. I mean, I remember when I was growing up, a lot of people had nothing but good things to say about this game. And funnily enough, despite my very impressive tenure on the PS2, this was one of the ones that I actually never played at the time. And I have never played it at all, so I mean... I've been playing all kinds of... Yeah, let's do a practice duel. Get a feel for this, because I know the system's a little a little weird. From what I've seen. So it's very similar to the Forbidden Memories uh, play system, except now you're also on a tiled map. So the way fusions worked in Forbidden Memories, they work the same way now. Okay. Oh, okay, uh, so it looks like False Bound Kingdom was released in North America in 2003 as well, so these two are fairly close. I imagine if we saw some of the models, they might be probably the same. Oh, yeah, some of the models are almost exactly identical, so yeah, it looks like, uh, what did I say, Duelist of the Roses was February, uh, False Bound Kingdom was in November of that same year, so they're almost a year apart. But the one thing I do remember about this game is if you're looking to kind of speed through it, Pumpkin the King of Ghosts is going to be your boy. I feel like I remember you saying something about that. Yeah, like it's got a, um, if it's your deck master, I think it's called, its passive ability just makes it continuously stronger. I think the more zombies you have. We'll, we'll see, we'll... Mess around with stuff. However long we take is however long we take with this game. Oh, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. And usually, um, whenever you go to select a deck master, it'll tell you what its special ability is, and you can strategize around it. Cool. Maybe I'll find something I like. I know. I think I've heard of the Pumpkin strategy, either from you or from someone else that has mentioned it before. I It, it sounds familiar, yeah, so we might, have, uh, we might have broached the topic before. But yes, I'm, I'm very interested to see what your strategy for all of this is. Is there music for this game, or is it just not for the tutorial? Uh, there is. There, it, it's just not right now. Okay, I was gonna say it feels weird if the whole game is gonna be like this. That no, it's not the entire. They um. So that's another thing this game shares with uh, Falls Down Kingdom is a lot of the battle tracks are actually the same. That I'm not too surprised on. Again, this came out kind of really early. I imagine this was like they're still trying to feed off that early hype of Yu-Gi-Oh when it's coming mm -hmm. over to America. So I imagine a lot of the stuff was just reusing assets. Yeah, because the PS2 came out in 2000. So both the games, uh, Duelist of the Roses and False Down Kingdom, came out three years after the PS2 came out in America. In America, yeah. But I mean, they already had this one game in 2001, so False Bound Kingdom had a little more time. I'm not used to the Komori dragon looking like an actual <laughs> dragon, just, just based on the card art. Yeah, because it always just looks like a head with wings. Well, it's got the two big claws underneath it, but you never, like... This game, and to a lesser extent, uh, Forbidden Memories, depict it as, like, a normal European-looking dragon with arms, legs, and wings, and I just don't get that from the card art. I've not been paying total attention to this tutorial. I probably should have just skipped it and figured it out from there. It's going over defense position. Yeah, I know what the defense position. Uh, yeah, ready now. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sometimes the battlefield is the best teacher. So now I attack and I take damage because this defense is too high. I'm very familiar with Aquamador. Jesus. If they're the same, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aquamador was one of the members of the 2KD club back in the day. You ever heard of the, or have you ever heard them called by that name? No. So it was a group of monsters that, while their attack was really nothing special, 
their defense was all 2000. So Aquamador was one, Giant Soldier of Stone was another, I believe Mystical Elf was one as well. Yes. All right. No, no, I not re never heard it referred to that. And I don't believe any of them had any additional card effects either. Oh, hey, speak of the stony devil. Jeez, I, really, I didn't know it was going to go over like every possible detail. Oh, magic, dragon capture card is a magic card instead of a trap card in this. Mm hmm. Oh, also, these monsters that you're currently using, don't get attached to them. Uh, why? They're going to be easily replaced. Well, this is just the, the deck you're using during the tutorial. It's oh. eventually going to... Yeah, once you break from here, it's going to do the same thing Forbidden Memories did, and it's going to give you a deck full of shit. Well, maybe I'll get lucky like I did last time. Well, as I said, the fusion system works the same way it does in Forbidden Memories. So if you know like what pieces you have to work with, you can make better monsters. <laughs> is the uh, I you said it's the same, so like I could do the twin head thunder dragon and everything like that. Yes, if you have the components for it. Okay, well at least I know. I gotta remember how it. I mean, for twin head, it's just an, an electric a thunder type and a dragon, uh, a certain attack or. Right, or a dragon and two thunders. It really just, as long as it's under the proper um, attack point prerequisite, you should be fine. So as long as, well, if you throw a thunder monster on a dragon with 1,600 or more attack points, you'll get it immediately. Same with vice versa, throwing a dragon on a thunder monster with 1,600. Yeah, I'm confident you'll get back into the flow. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. I think once I come up yeah. with whatever strategy I'm going to use, uh, based on my deck master, I'll probably be fine. Yeah, you'll get it. I mean, Forbidden Memories wasn't that long ago, was it? Uh, it's been a while, I think. I think it's been almost a year now. That sounds about right. I, I regret going into the tutorial. I did not realize it was going to be this lengthy. Pretty involved. I mean, I get it. There's a lot of stuff to be... But I, I don't need the basics of, oh, this is what a special effect does. This is what defense does and all that. I don't, I don't need all that. Well, this is like, back when a game didn't just assume that you were familiar with the, with the source material. I, I get it. It makes sense. But, ugh. At least give you the option to leave. Now I'm just ang ang angsty because they maybe sit through all that. Well, there's always a surrender option. Well, I couldn't do it in the tutorial. Then I suppose there is not always the surrender option. <laughs> so I'll select my initial deck: Thunder Nyan Nyan, Serpentine Princess, or Luminous Soldier. Uh, let's see. I mean, I have to choose light, earth, water. I can't. Was that warrior, fairy, magician, and fish? Thunder, plants, fairy, and magician. And then earth, water, dark, wind. I don't know how much it matters. This one has solid defense. Luna Soldier just looks cool. Thunder Nyan Nyan has the highest attack. It's also got a cute name. Uh, you know what? I feel like no one probably ever picked the Serpentine Princess. Let's go with this one. It's not like these things are all going to stay anyway, so. Yeah, you'll probably very quickly get superior cards and you'll cycle out. I feel like, I don't know, a lot of these games where they have Kaiba here, and they they always use his evil look, where he's got that, uh, like, black shade around his eyes, and, like, the, the he doesn't have pupils. He just has the, the blue. It's okay, we'll defeat him. I did look this up. The game apparently roughly takes somewhere between 12 to 15 hours, which isn't too long, honestly. That's uh, about average, I'd say, but on, on the shorter side for a lot of games. 
Yeah, but very similar to Forbidden Memories. It also depends on uh, how R and Jesus decides to treat you, because the cards you get are random when you defeat an enemy. Am I gonna have to go through a whole gauntlet at the end like I did last time? That I don't know, actually. All right then. Hopefully, if I do, I get lucky like I did last time. I'm not really paying too much attention to the plot here, but to be honest, I'm not sure how interested I am in the plot itself. I just want to play the game. <laughs> I mean, there you go. Okay, so there, there are cards that grant ultimate power. Got it. That's always how it is. Pretty much. It all comes down to card games. Yep. Fate of the world. Determined by card games. This is where the meta players would come in. Meta players? Yeah, like the people that, that play the meta. That's what I'm talking about. When I say modern Yu-Gi-Oh, those are the people that I usually talk about. They follow the meta hand, hand traps, so you can't activate anything. Card, then they can summon 20 different things. They basically cancel out your special summons. If you special summon, they draw 20 different cards. It's ridiculous. So the type of gamers that people like me generally can't stand. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't like the current state of Yu-Gi-Oh, to be honest. I'm not going to say everyone. I know there are people that do enjoy it, but it's not fun the way it is now. Mm -hmm. Like I said, ar around the uh, Synchro to early XCs is where I was satisfied with Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, and I had I had long since fallen off the bandwagon at that point, so I still don't know Synchro or anything like that. Yeah, if there's a game that I can find that's interesting enough, I'll take you through it a little bit so you can see. Yeah, I'd be fine. I mean, again, there was that one for the, the 360 that I tried, but I could never get a feel for it. I think I... I don't know if it's still... I mean, they shut down the 360 arcade uh, or online shop now, which, I mean... That, yeah, that it's unfortunate, but it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's been so many years, and the Xbox 360 is long out of date, so... Rest in yeah. peace. I'm still a little amazed that they never made a digital version of Tenchu Z. Like, if you don't own the physical copy, you cannot play that game. Yeah, well, pros and cons to physical and digital media. Oh, of course, there, there always are, but that game specifically, I enjoy. Yeah, so if I want to play it, I have to... Well, yeah, I have to find it. I'm sure you can find it online. I don't think it's like it, it's not hailed as one of like the the all time greats or anything. So I don't think it's too overly expensive. Well, you never know. Sometimes the the ones that are less talked about, you know, they get a uh, their prices jacked up because you can't find them because they were never hailed as a great. All right, right. So and I mean, Tenchu has a cult following, but I, I don't know. Like I got my copy years and years ago, so the prices could easily have fluctuated between then and now. So do I side with Kaiba, or do I side with, uh, you know what, let's side with Kaiba, because why not? Okay, so you're going with the, the Yorks? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Immediately betrayed the guy that summoned me. Yep. Yeah, why not? I don't get to be evil that often in these games. Let's go with the currently evil-looking side. Yeah, so... Not surprisingly, Kaiba side, very similar to Falsebound Kingdom. You get all of your uh, villainous archetype characters, so Rex, Weevil, Pegasus, those guys. I'm fine with that. That being said, I do I do actually enjoy fighting Weevil, but eh, whatever. I, I like the insect deck, especially later on in Yu-Gi-Oh! when it gets more evolved. Yeah, so Yugi and all of his friends will be the people that you repeatedly curb stomp and grind against to get all your good stuff. You know, I'm fine with it. They're always talking about friendship and shit, and I'm going to stomp them out. Jesus, the amount of dialogue. Uh, this this oh. is how you really know it. It was it was designed for the PS One. Dialogue on dialogue. Well, they also got to give you the historical context. I get it. Because if okay. they don't do that, you're, if they don't do that, you're like a blind butcher's apprentice. You can't really get a feel for the state. So it's like a so it's a world map, and I just kind of go from like level to level, I guess. Correct. So this is, a, I believe, this it should be a map of Great Britain. I think that's what it looks like. But uh, yeah, e yes, okay. So then there are different areas where the different members of House Lancaster are. I'm not entirely sure what's going on on the European mainland. 
take a quick gander at my deck. Right, uh, and definitely get a feel for what the the Serpentine Princess's deck leader ability is. Uh, let's see, how do I? Oh, wrong button. I don't know what button does what yet, so. Well, apparently, whatever one you just pushed gets you back out to the world map. That was circle. I was, I was pressing X, and it didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, is it? Okay, there we go. Okay, that's what the card does. Oh. Oh, okay, well. Thanks. So if you want to see the 3D model of a card, you just press uh, triangle on it again. I want to see the basic, you know, in basic info, though. You know, typically, I'm a fan of Lamia's, but in her case, I might make an exception. It's the teeth. Yeah, a little unsettling. Oh, Mass Sorcerer doesn't have an effect. This is, it's always weird to me when they take the effects away from monsters that had them. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, well, so in that regard, that's, that's actually one... Um, one way in which this differs from Forbidden Memories is there are actual effect monsters now. I don't want to see... I want to see the effect. Uh, try triangle. That's that's the 3D thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which again, I like. I don't mind. His hands are creepy. But... Always have been. Yeah, that doesn't do it. Not that either. This goes through the different things at the top there. Like in the, the power swap Kairu sheen. Is it select? Nope, not select. Not start. That goes through the different decks I have. What what button am I not hitting? Because I I think I've hit everything. Um, you said X was what brought you back out to the no, world that, map. Uh, circle was uh. Well, right, that was square. Okay, so that's how you select a card. Oh, okay, well, I can at least look at yep. it here. Yeah, there it is. Leader ability. Great. Well, maybe assign her to the position, and it'll tell you what it is. I'm trying to, but... Uh... uh... Okay, yes, the library is where it shows you all the cards in the game. Yeah. Game, I'm feeling a very unintuitive right now, I'll be honest with you. I wonder if you have to move another monster in your deck up to the leader position to make the, the extra slot. I don't know how to. As I move them, it moves them over here. Uh huh. Okay, now move them back. Okay. Yeah, okay, so your deck leader is, is taking the. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so your deck leader isn't counted among the cards that you actually play. So if you select or find a way to promote one of these cards to your deck leader. Okay. Well, I want to move. Uh... The, the princess back over here. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a way to get her back in the deck leader position. What about um? Oh no, that's that's deck selection. Uh, hang on. I can uh, the all-knowing machine. I, I feel really stupid right now. That I can't figure this out. I'm hitting every button though.
So apparently you find the monster that you want as the new deck leader. Uh, has to be 2 LT or higher. I'm not entirely sure what that means. And just press start on it. Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah. There we go. Okay. Now look at what her deck leader ability is. Still nothing. Doesn't have one. Okay, cool. So I... Do any of my guys have one? No. Okay, so... Great. There we go. The all the all knowing Google machine has helped us. Thank you, Google machine. We're at our time limit, but I want to at least get like one actual duel in. So I think we're okay. Like the fans will be okay with us going a little over. Teach you a lesson you'll never forget. I'm not even slightly concerned. The lack of music is upsetting, man. What is going on here? That might be a thing you have to consult with your options. I know for a fact this game has music. Oh, I ended my turn. Whoops. I, was, I pressed start to see if I could load my options. That did not work. Yep, start ends your turn. That's how it worked in Forbidden Memories, too. Let's see... Okay, and, uh, start. So you actually have... Well, okay. What? Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can figure out the music issue in between now and... I'm pretty sure it's just... Cause, yeah, because you have sound effects. That's not an issue. Oh, that's all I want to. Okay, so... I'm not entirely sure what you can do with all that now. Because I know the Wandering Doomed and Crawling Dragon number two would have given me Skelgon. Oh, uh, okay. Well... I don't know all the fu fusion, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, you're fine. It's it's Taya, so I'm pretty sure we're Re yeah. Between this episode and the next, I'll figure out the the music issue here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Wow, full on, like, they modeled all these things, Jesus. Yep. Shining Friendship thought it had shit on you. Uh, for a second, I thought I was gonna lose. I was like, wait. Uh oh. That's a bit of a different story. A little bit. I didn't expect her to have something so strong hitting. I've never even seen this card before. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't that a shame? A little bit. Interesting. Yeah, because I was familiar with the concept of binding chain. I just didn't expect it to look like that. I didn't either. Also, I think it got a boost from being on the mountain. I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Well... Just Regardless, Taya might actually spin the block on you a little here. Oh, 
yeah, he all right, so at least I know it did get the boost from being on the mountain tile. And it looks like it handles things in increments of five or a five hundred, just like Forbidden Memories did. No, uh, that's typically how field spells worked anyway, so. I think there were a couple of two or three hundred. I might be misremembering. I don't know. Grappler, no. The artist formerly known as Grappler. Didn't even get a chance. And suddenly we're looking pretty bad here. Mm hmm. You might actually get curb stomped by Taya. I blame the lack of music. There's also an option, uh, or at least there should be, if you want to turn the combat animations off. Yeah, I might do that later. Can I fuse any of these? I mean, effectively, probably not. I feel like I should try something. At the very least, I can... Uh... Get a shot, I guess. Well. At least I tried. You did. She knows all the fusions, I don't. It looks like she's using equip cards. Oh, that might be even worse. Yeah, because the fusion mechanic or the the animation is still the same as it was in Forbidden Memories, where it's the the two cards swirling together and then forming one. And generally, if that happens, it'll show you the opponent what it is. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I think what she's doing is using equip cards to make her stuff stronger. Damn, my guys are terrible. There's no cohesion. And the little bit of cohesion I had, I didn't realize. That's an unsettling noise. Uh, what does this do? Let's see, boost attack, defense, all rush on rush the field. I don't. By how much? 600. I was gonna say, your, that would tie. Your serpentine, your serpentine princess is a reptile. Okay, so I. Can I. Now, I'm assuming. I think now, I think when you play a field card, it might only apply to the tile that you're on. Let me try it. Oh. I think okay. go and select which land again. I think you had a there was an option for for face. I think it said that might be how you turned it up. My wandering doom is doomed. Oh, it's all just going to shit. So wait, does, does, does start still skip this? No, I've tried. I've hit every button. Oh, no, there it is. Something did it. It wasn't start, but something did it. Huh. <laughs> what should do to this? It said it was spellbound. I don't know what that means. Well, I have that, but I don't have anything. 
I was going to say, like, outside of Drooling Lizard and Serpentine Princess, I really don't think there is anything. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try some. All right, that didn't quite work how I wanted it to. Well, all right, then. I mean, you can still use your deck leader to attack. It's just if she dies, you lose. The problem is, I'm pretty sure my deck leader is weaker. Yeah, I think she's only got 1,400 attacks, so you might actually have to use Ray's body temperature. Uh... I don't even know how to use it. I think you should just be able to hover over it and activate it. Well, let me summon something first. Oh, thank God. I was going to say, that's, uh, that's a little more fortunate for you. Wait, what tile is she on? Oh, she's on a field spell. All right. Well, all right. This is okay. So those are in the graveyard. Okay, so that's not how you use those. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all you have to do is hover over it, and then it should give you an option to to turn to face up. Well, lesson learned, I guess. I'm pretty sure this is curtains for you. Yeah. Oh wait, so hold on. Attacking a a deck leader. What the fuck? I don't know, but... Okay. Oh, good. For a second, I thought I might have had a chance. Foolish of me. Huh. This all went to shit very quickly. She's got some kind of strategy worked out here. I'm just not entirely sure what she's doing. I don't know either, but I can't do anything with some of these. Um, dinosaur, dinosaur, rock. Dragon. Um, Fuck it, I'm gonna go on a gamble here. I've got no other options. Rock and dragon. Or rock and dinosaur. You know what? Let me try if that fails. Can I I mean the best you can get is Sword Arm of Dragon, and frankly, Practical's got a comparable attack power. Yeah, but I can't summon it. Unless this works what? differently. I was gonna say, what's stopping you? Oh, okay, this doesn't do the sacrificing stuff. Okay, never mind. No. Yeah, forget what you have known. This is not Battle City. That said, though, I think star points do factor in slightly to this. I may be able to save this yet, now that I know that that's not how that works. Because I would have done things a little differently now, but I forgot. So, the binding chain ain't fucking with you this time. I wonder why. Uh, I think because I moved a spot space away, it couldn't hit me. I don't know, though. I think, can you also put your deck leader in defense mode? Because your defense is higher than binding chain's attack. Maybe, but I can't summon Mega... Uh, yeah, I can't send Mega Zalor yeah, out. Oh, I see what it is. So it looks like every turn you get a number of star points, like it's right uh, to the left below your life points, and whatever your star points equals, you can summon up to that. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, because now you're back down to one. So then we'll see next turn how, how far you increase every turn. Oh, 
<laughs> well, there's that option at least. Oh, there oh, you go. Not, not that. Now you just need to go and find the music option. Yeah, I, I don't know what the issue with that is. We'll pick, like I said, we'll figure it out between episodes so after this battle. Why, why are you so powerful? I've got 300 points left. I'm, I am on a prayer here. That's got to be something to do with Chimace's ability. So it looks like you can either move or attack, but you can't do both. Right. Okay, so that's how you, like, whatever you did to make it face up, I'm assuming that's how you activate the bell cards. Yeah, I think I just figured that out. So that's good, we got that figured out. Yeah, and it looks like you've got Serpentine Princess in defense, so that's why nobody's been screwing with her. Alright, good, that'll heal me for a little bit. That's really all we needed it for at the just a little bit of a of a life jacket here. Mm-hmm. Alright. Okay, what do you do? We'll face all cards located in this on sea terrain. That doesn't help. There's no sea terrain. I mean, I'm pretty sure Mako is one of your enemies later, so that might actually help you against him. Can I mix anything here? Um, uh, he's a dark. On. Wait, he's a dark zombie, and I have a dragon. Right. So depending on because, so because the wicked dragon in Forbidden Memories, it didn't work the same way normal dragons do. This game might be different. If you combine it with Flame Ghost, you might get the dragon zombie. Let's get a shot at them. Hey! Hey, it, yeah, there we go. It's, it's not not a perfect solution, but it'll, you know, help us for a little bit here. It's, I mean, it's better than the two things that made it up. We got that off our ass for a second. Yeah, that binding chain's finally gone. <laughs> Wait, what? oh no, wait, practical it's the same. I could have had it tie with Key Mouse or Key Mace. Right. Yeah, because that'll be that'll be a three hundred point deficit if she decides to attack the zombie. Yeah. And hey, has got a lot of shit on the field. She does, but it took me a bit to really understand everything, so. She didn't attack, though. Oh, she couldn't attack. Or, yeah, because you can either move or attack, but you can't do both. Okay, so... What do you do? So face up. Spell uh, Spellbinds, oppose monsters. Three turns. That's actually perfect. We can... That is actually pretty good, yeah. Alright, but that only works when it gets attacked, so... So I'm putting it right there, in front of, I'm right in front of the key mace. Now, what does Spellbind do in this game? It, uh, it's, it seems like it's going to hold them in their position for three turns, like a Swords of Revealing Light kind of thing, but the key mace can't move. Mm. Which is good, because then I can get... Um, Oh wait, my guy's alive still. Yeah. 
You stay there. I want you to hold that position. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is useless to us. Oh, all right, hold on. We'll save that for a little bit. Mm hmm. No reason to waste it now. Um, should swatch it to defense, but I don't think teammates can attack now anyway. Okay, now hover over Keymace for a second. Okay, so it is just movement. It's got nothing to do with her attack. Yeah, which is still good. Ah, well, that's why it's so powered up. Look at all that stuff on it. Yep, that sounds about right. Or is that just the is that just the stuff in Te no, excuse me in Taya's deck that can power it up? And then, well, it listed paralyzing potion, so maybe. Oh yeah, I think you see what you're saying. Yep, because it says power up there. What is that thing called? What this one? Jormengard? Okay. That, that's actually kind of cool. Not that good. What? No, I don't want to summon the, the potion. Oh. I was a hit up and I didn't realize. So next turn, I'll destroy Key Mace. Alright, at the cost of your practical, but... Like, that thing's gotta go. Yeah, like, I have to do this, unless I can fuse something excellent here. Uh... What does this do? Water type monster by 500. Oh, uh... Jormengard's that. He is. Uh, and... Okay, so let me see. So at the moment, I don't think Paralyze... We need Paralyze of Potion. We'll save that for a little bit. So, oh, I hit the wrong button. Okay. We have the salt of the earth, Doc. Destroy them both. Mm -hmm. Not the outcome I would have wanted, but we'll take it. At the very least, Key Mace is out of your hair. Fuck! Great. That, that's less than ideal. A little bit. Okay, this one we can take that at least. Okay, so moving also forces you out of defense mode. That's interesting. That makes sense. Mm hmm. So as really long as I... the shield at the same time. Yeah, I mean, as long as you can keep a, a guard up, it helps. Did you ever in your wildest dreams think that Taya would be the one pushing you to your breaking point? Well, it doesn't really help that I don't entirely know what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. Save yeah. him. Save him for when he gets destroyed. No, are you kidding? If you put him in defense mode right now and then activate the trident, it'll power his defense up. Oh, true. All right, hold on. Yeah, nothing will be able to break through that. Apparently, I just don't know how spell cards spell cards spell cards work. Oh, Google machine! Oh. 
It's alright, he still can't punch through it, so that's good at least. Maybe it's because they weren't face up. That's my only guess. Okay, so it looks like uh, the game instructions say to press X on the card to select it, R2 to, f or, yeah, R2 to flip it up, and then X again to activate it. They lied to me. What are you, real? Uh, that doesn't help us right now. Clearly, I'm missing something here. Unless. If it functioned as an equip card, maybe you had to apply it to the monster you wanted to use it on? I'm wondering that myself. I think I just lost anyway. Yeah, okay. Well, You're well, you know, if we got to use that spell card correctly, it probably would have worked out. Well, oh, you know what? Because she was equipping him from the hand, so I think... Yeah, all right. Yeah. You know what? All right, lesson learned. All right, we're going to figure out what's going on with the music, and we'll see you guys next time for when we actually win. Later.